and that proved to be successful? Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I think we, I think, I think we, uh, I think we did that. Um, so we grew from three of us. I think we grew to maybe about like 15 people in like two years, two and a half years, and then. Uh, we were building, we wound up building a lot of e-commerce, like first generation e-commerce sites. So we built like the first site for like um, e-toys and, and Barnes and Noble, and, like Nokia, a few, a few companies that, that were just experimenting with e-commerce. So we, we built some of the first sites. And it was super hard. Um, you know, we'd be working easily 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Like just there's no, no break, no like just straight up all the time. Um, and it, so it was mostly we were just building software for other companies, we were, you know, kind of consulting or contracting, and uh, that's um, we realized that was kind of sucky. Um, it's a good you can get paid a lot of money. We were getting paid a good amount of money, but um, you're not creating any residual value. You're not building a product. Like you're not nothing is accumulating value. It's like when we stop working, like we can get paid a lot, but it was basically like an hourly wage. It wasn't that much different than working at an ice cream store. It was just a more a higher hourly wage. Um, but you know, if you didn't work, if you stopped working, you weren't like adding anything. Um, so we decided at some point in the future we would definitely try to build a product. And then we were we got lucky; we were able to sell that company right at the right at the very top uh, of the, the, the dot com bubble. We sold it in January of two thousand. I think like twenty minutes before everything fell apart. Um, so we we just got really fortunate that we were actually able to get anything out of that. Cool. So you sold the company. I'm sure uh, the paycheck was pretty good compared to anything that had happened before. Uh, yeah, we sold the company for, it was funny, when, when uh, yeah, we, got, we got asked by Vignette, uh, the company that we sold it to, it was a big, uh, big company in Texas that content management software, and uh, they wanted to know if we were interested in, in discussing acquiring the company. Sure. Um, so me and, and one of my co-founders flew down to Texas, to Austin, to talk to them. And we had, none of us had ever sold the company before, we had no idea like, what to expect or anything. Um, and uh, they hadn't told us the price, so we, were, we, were, we didn't know like, what was going to happen. So on, on the plane over, we kept thinking, like, well, so what are we going to do? Like, how do, we, how do we think about this? Like, should we, do we need to say a price? Or like, well, how much should we want to sell a company for? Like, what sounds reasonable? And then we decided, no, 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 we definitely, like, we're going to let them pick the price. Like, we're not going to say anything, we're going to let them pick the price, because like, they're the ones that are interested. But then we thought, okay, but how are we going to respond? Like, what, what do you think sounds reasonable? And uh, I said, um, well, I think, I think we should get at least a million dollars for this company. Um, it was like, there was, we had no investors at the time, so it was just us that had all the, the other shares with five co-founders. Um, I said, well, I think, um, four co-founders. I think we should just get at least a million dollars. Like, does that sound reasonable? And my friend said, well, yeah, I guess we could probably do that. Um, definitely shouldn't sell for less than that, because you know, less than that we just make you know, in, in terms of revenue uh, pretty, pretty quickly. And we're like, okay, we're gonna, if they offer less than a million dollars, we're definitely not gonna agree. And then like two hours later on the plane trip, we were like, maybe we can get $2 million. Like, do you think we can get $2 million? And my friend was like, you know, yeah, I guess so. Like, they're a big company. It doesn't really matter to them. Like, they probably get $2 million. So are like, okay, if they let anything less than $2 million, we're not going to agree. Um, so we get, to the, we get to the boardroom, this big building. There's like this, like, giant uh, conference table, you know, big wooden table. It's just me and my co-founder, three of, three of the people on the other side. And they literally do this thing. You know, they like write down a number on a piece of paper and they like slide it across the table. Like, like the yeah, like that literally happened. I think they had like probably seen the same movies, so like they probably thought it was cool too. <laughs> so, so like, well, so we want to make you an offer. So they write down a number and they like fold the paper up and they slide it in the table. And I like, I get it. And I unfold it and it says 25 million. And I'm like, <laughs> I guess that's kind of in the ballpark of what we were thinking about, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, we were really thinking 30. And they were like, we'll give you 26, and that's it. And like, Fine. <laughs> so you could have said no. You could have said no, yeah. But that's how the negotiation went. So we sold it for 26 million, which was, you know, not a huge amount of money, um, especially since it was half cash, half stock, and like all of the stock went pretty much to zero immediately. And then most of the cash, we wound up investing in other tech companies, which went to zero. So we wound up with a few million dollars out of it. But, um, but it, was, it was more money. You know, when, when, I, when I got my share, because we had no investors, so I just got basically a quarter of it or something like that. Um, it was more money than I think the sum total of anyone in all of my ancestors put together had ever seen. 
right. like going back, you know, 100,000 years, back to the existence of money. Like I was sure, because like my family, like nobody made any money. Like I was sure that at that point, like I had more money than all of my ancestors summed up that had ever had, which was kind of a weird and like humbling yeah. feeling. Uh, do you think that feeling of, you know, being financially okay then when you finally sold this company, uh, does it push you to take more risks uh, with the things that you were going to build in the future, or how much of an impact was that on building Evernote later on? Um, that's great because even with all of the, even with all the ups and downs uh, in it later, like having enough money, where uh, I, I didn't have enough money at that point where. I, like I knew I would have to keep working. Like it wasn't, it wasn't enough where I could just like never do anything again. But I knew that I would never have to do anything I didn't want to do. Now that, that was the best freedom. Like that was the best part of it. Was like, just like this knowledge that I have, I have just enough where yeah I have to keep working, but I'm pretty much never again going to be forced to do something that I don't want to do. So like I'm in control of like how I spend my life, which is kind of this amazing luxury and privilege uh, to have. Um, th that made the biggest difference. I don't know that it. Like I'm, I, I don't really think about risk. Um, I don't really think that making startups is particularly risky. You know, it's the kind of an unconventional view, but I don't, I don't see where the risk is. But it, it definitely like let us do stuff that we didn't know whether it would work out or not because like we knew we had a little bit of a buffer. Like we didn't we didn't have to like just think about how we were gonna get by. And if you know if we worked on something for a year and it didn't make any money, like that wasn't a disaster. We could we could recover from that. So it was very nice, very nice to have that security.